For my video today, I'm going to take a look at the amazing two-player abstract game, Hive. Hive is known for its accessibility, its amazing components, and its strategic depth. Let's take a look. Inside of the standard version of Hive, you will find one handy carrying case, which we use to take in our backpacks or my partner's purse, rules in French and English, useful if you speak one of those two languages, and these amazing game pieces in both black and white. Each player will receive a set of game pieces that consist of one queen, two spiders, three ants, three grasshoppers, and two beetles. The goal of Hive is to surround your opponent's queen. This can be done by either color. And once it's fully surrounded, the game is over. Similar to chess, each piece has a unique movement. The queen, for example, can only move one space at a time. Similarly, the beetle can only move one space at a time. However, the beetle can actually move on top of the hive, making it a very unique and powerful piece. So the beetle can move to here or to here. The ant, the most powerful piece, can slide anywhere along the outside of the edge that it can squeeze into. However, it cannot squeeze into areas that it cannot fit, such as this pinch point. The spider moves exactly three spaces, and similarly cannot squeeze into places that are pinched off. The spider could move one, two, three, or one, two, three. The spider cannot double back in the middle of its move. The grasshopper, as you would expect, jumps in unblocked lines in any of the straight directions it can go. This grasshopper could jump across to here, to here, or across the queen. Similarly, if the grasshopper jumped into a straight line into a hole, it could do that as well. However, it could not clear that hole and end up on the other side of the beetle. Hive is a strategically deep game that uses two governing rules about how each piece can move and how each piece can be played. To start the game, the white player places a piece, forming the beginnings of the hive. Next, the black player takes a turn. As they have no pieces on the board, they cannot move, so they also place a piece. Next, it's the white player's turn. No player can move any of their pieces until their queen is placed, which must be placed between the second and fourth turn. In this example, white decides to play their queen. Next, black plays a piece. Then white chooses to play another piece. The first major rule of Hive is that when placing a piece, it can only touch your color. So I could place this spider any of these places. However, I could not place it here because the spider touches a black piece and a white piece. Similarly, I cannot place it here or any of the places that only touch black. I'll choose to place it here. So at this point, black chooses to play their queen. Now on white's turn, since they've had their queen in for a turn already, white could choose to move a piece or bring another piece in. White chooses to move their spider. One, two, three. Now here's the second basic rule of Hive. It's called the One Hive Rule. No piece can be moved that would separate the game board into two separate boards. In this example, the queen maybe wants to escape now that it's starting to become surrounded. However, if it moves, it leaves this spider unattached, and that's not allowed. In this instance, this spider effectively pinned this queen, making it unable to move at this point. And that's basically it. That's how simple it is to play Hive. My partner and I got this and instantly fell in love. We played tons and tons of games, each one being different because the board shifts and changes and is never the same. It's dependent on what pieces are played. I highly recommend, if you're going to play this game, 
pick it along with someone who is also new to it so you can learn the strategies gradually over time. Hive does have a bit of a learning curve, so if you want to play competitively, you need to put some time in. But it's not nearly as gigantic as something you'd see in chess or Go, games have been around for thousands of years. There aren't any really um, traditional starting lines or games that you have to memorize in order to be a good Hive player. Hive came out in 2001, and starting a number of years ago, the designer, John Yanni, started to develop new pieces to add to the game that changed the way the game is played. The first piece was the Mosquito, which takes on the characteristics of any piece it's adjacent. If a mosquito was played like this, it can move like a spider. If it is touching pieces like this, it can move like a spider or an ant. Next is the Ladybug, a very powerful defensive and offensive bug. The Ladybug has the unique ability to move two spaces on top of the hive and then one space down. In this instance, the ladybug could move one, two, three, one, two, three, or one, two, three. This is a very powerful piece to start the game off with as it will likely be able to get out of its initial position and into any other spot you need. Additionally, if you save it for later to as an attacking piece, it'll almost always be able to get into that spot that other pieces can't get. And finally, most recently, the pill bug came out. The pill bug is a very different bug, and it really changes the flow and the dynamics of the game, especially when added with the ladybug and the mosquito. The pill bug has the special ability that I can pick up and move other pieces. A very strong ability. The pill bug can only move one place at a time, but it can also pick up a piece. In this up instance, Maybe the white player is scared of that beetle jumping on top of its queen. It uses this opportunity to pick up the beetle, move it to the other side, and place it here. On the black player's turn, the bug is knocked out and cannot move, allowing white to escape. These additional pieces have been coming out about every three years, with the latest one coming out in the middle of 2014. If you are interested in playing competitively at an even higher level, I'd recommend purchasing the Play Hive Like a Champion, by uh, champion high player Randy Ingersoll. This book goes over basically everything you need to know to play competitively, including all the expansion pieces, what all the pieces do in depth, and every kind of pin and setup you could possibly imagine. Now, honestly, I chose to review this game second because it's my favorite game. It has everything I like in the game. Strategy, it's fun, the theme is great, the components are amazing. These tiles are so good. There's a lot of interest in the game now. There's even a tournament every year online on boardspace.net where they determine who the world's best Hive player is, and you even get the trophy. I love the game so much, I even purchased the Pocket Edition as well. The Pocket Edition is great for traveling around with. As you can see, the pieces are about a third the size of the original. They still maintain that hefty weight, and they're just as thick. But they travel on very nice. Additionally, the Pocket Edition comes with the Ladybug and the Mosquito expansions for free, so you don't have to purchase those separately. However, because of how new the Pillbug is, you still have to purchase that separately. For me, Hive got a fun score of 9. I would give it a 10, but there are some of my favorite games that just outweigh it because of the complexity and grand scale of some of them. Hive is great, and I've played more than any game in my collection, but it's just not quite to that point of theatrics and maybe some of the larger board games are. For strategy, I gave Hive a 10. There's nothing like getting into these crazy games, some of them up to 40 minutes long, trying to decide how many all these moves in the future, what will happen, what will my opponent do, what can I do to not lose this game. I've played tons and tons of games on Board Game Arena and BoardSpace.net, and that's the best way to get a lot of experience in playing if you're looking to play competitively. You really need to know how the game works, kind of some of these few these opening lines, and really what to do with each piece before you dive in and try and kill it with your buddies. For ease, I gave Hive a score of 5. I explained to you the basic premise of the game in a couple minutes. The game is unbelievably deep, but the few simple rules that govern it are very simple, and each piece moves the way you would expect it to. 
Replayability, I gave Hive a score of a 5. Every game is different because there's no board. The board presents itself as you play. So many games I've played, never one of them has felt like, oh, I've done this one before, or, I've, I've seen this setup before. It's always different, and I love that about the game. Randomness? I gave Hive a random score of negative 1. This is an abstract game, so all the information is known to both players. There's no dice rolling or card drawing. It's all there for you to know, and you can think it through all the way. Cost? I gave Hive a cost score of negative 3. The game isn't super expensive, the base set being between $25 and $30, but by the time you add in the expansion pieces, which are about $10 a piece, it ends up being a pretty pricey game. For me, it's been worth it, but it is a little high for a simple abstract game. For theme, I gave Hive a 4. The theme is really great in the game. It's really interesting and different with the insects, and each bug moves the way you kind of expect. That's very intuitive. Additionally, with the hexagons, it resembles the honeycomb, and since you're protecting your queen, B, that's perfect. Setup, I gave Hive a setup score of negative 1. All you have to do is separate out the black from white pieces and start. Perfect. Players, Hive is a two-player only game, so it gets a score of 2. Quality, the quality of the components is great. The instructions are simple and easy to read, and the addition of the travel bag is amazing. I can't say anything bad about the quality of this game. Duration, I gave a score of 3, which is right in the middle. When you first start out and are first learning, games can be over very quickly in a matter of 5 to 10 minutes, because you never see that thing coming because it's all new. As I started to play and play on and got more experience and started playing lots of games on Board Game Arena, some of my games could take up to 45 minutes to play because my opponent and I are trying to think at such a high level of what we're going to do so many moves in the future. So I put it right in the middle as far as duration. Altogether, Hive for me gets a score of 97. Hive really has everything in a game that I look for. It's fun, it's strategic, it's different every time, easy to pick up, easy to set up, and has great quality.